Uh, in a recent interview I did with Ian Brendan, who is the head of renewables at the University of Edinburgh, he was talking about tidal power and wave power. Mm -hmm. um, he felt that there was a potential they could have three gigawatts of wave and tidal power installed and operating by 2020. Mm -hmm. When I asked him if he had any working now, the answer was no. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's any potential uh, for large-scale power generation from wave and tidal? Um, the, um, it, probably yes, but if you changed it to a, a more important issue and said, what do you think about the potential of ocean energy? We have a, we have a team of people that have been di diligently working, they're going to spend all summer, and the head of the team is a guy named uh, uh, Dr. George Hart, and he was on the, sp on the aircraft carrier a few weeks ago, or I guess six weeks ago, when his baby, his laser missile, shot down the falling spy satellite. He, he has basically been going over and over and over the Gulf of Maine to say, where is the sweet spot? Mm -hmm. And what he discovered has gotten so many people in Maine so excited. There is a five by five area, I, th I think he's talking about kilometers or knots, or anyway, it's not very big, about, about uh, 10 miles off Matinicus Rock, which is kind of at the bottom of Penobscot Bay, where all winter long, there's a cyclone going on, 24 hour wind. Really? And so what we're basically working on this summer is all of the final blueprints to kick off an enormous fundraising effort to basically put inside this small sweet spot of, of offshore wind, 95 platforms of the world's largest wind turbines, and hopefully get it done within five to seven years and create enough electricity during the winter to back out home heating oil once and forever in the state of Maine where over 80% of our homes are home heating oil. That is a big offshore wind project. Okay. Now in the summer, it actually turns into a far more benign area and so we'll do, a, a, this is over my head, but a reverse heat pump and start experimenting with how we can take the more, more moderate electricity and through electrolysis end up finally producing liquid ammonia and I believe liquid ammonia can end up being potentially a very viable replacement for motor gasoline in the internal combustion engine. So do you think there'll be a trend toward microgeneration? Yeah. To sure. handle pockets yeah, of this? Yeah, yeah. Um, and do you think there's any way that we would see an increase of our big load generation to where you would have more nuclear plants, more coal plants, and more gas-fired generation? Uh, pro you know, we'll, we should do another nuclear or two or three, except for the fact that China needs it more than we do. Uh, and that, and that, uh, from the from the very from the very limited calculations available, it would appear that, that the new, that the energy consumed to build a thousand megawatt nuclear plant is equal to about ten to fifteen years of electricity output. Mm -hmm. Now the proponents will say that's irrelevant because over fifty years you'll create five times more energy. But see, on a present value basis, if you haven't broken even after ten years, forget it. So if I want to break this up and I look at our transportation issue, we need to transportate yeah. ourselves less. Yeah. So transportate ourselves? Transportate ourselves, yes. So if we, if we actually could reduce transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, Which we can. Simply because we have no supply. Yeah. And uh, we have the tools. And we have the Think tools. how awful it would be if we said, what we need to do, I had a dream that there was these things that we could type and all of a sudden you and I could communicate. And I could be in Egypt and you could be in, oh, so that's just a dream. No, we've done that or a webcam. Uh, we've done that. We have all the tools as a mindset. There's a tremendous irony there because the um, uh, global warming guys say that we have to do this as well, but for a totally different reason. Yeah, but they're a little bit uh, So we, we, come, we come down on parallel paths yeah. because yeah. we do need to reduce transportation yeah. if we're going to keep up yeah. with this. Yeah. I think also we have a premium that should be paid for transportation, uh, which takes it out of the realm of everyone using it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the idea of a the idea of people expecting that you could go to the airport and get on a plane in San Francisco and go to Boston for a hundred and seventy dollars round trip it was absurd. It, it was a cruel mm -hmm. hoax. Um, we, we've been living in a Starbucks economy, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 on the on the on the guys that you couldn't afford, you know things that were labor intensive. So we really told the blue collar workforce to you know just take it on the chin, guys. You're not relevant anymore. You know, to become a software guy or a consultant, mm -hmm. or go back and become an eye banker, uh, but the blue collar era is over. And I say, no, no, the blue collar era is having a roaring comeback.
we're out of oil-filled workers, we're out of people in the steel industry, we're out of iron ore people, uh, the, the, the local dairies are coming back, you know, the, the, the future is going to be a bunch of villages of real people getting paid. Mm -hmm. And designing our, our economy yeah. around yeah. less transportation. I suggested around. a few weeks ago on a on a uh, on the uh, a TV show, it was saying, "Well, no, but it sounds great if you're basically living in the Rust Belt." Said, oh, but what about people like us around Manhattan? I said, "Well, yeah, a lot of investment bankers in Manhattan. Uh, I know a lot of. Them. They created their own depression. To be honest with you, they can they can sell their three pay suits in a fire sale and get coveralls and go to work." Mm -hmm. Then I suggested you might buy Oshkosh as a growth stock. <laughs> well, I think this also happened out in Los Angeles, but for a different reason. In L.A., the traffic is so bad you can't move yeah. anyway, yeah. and therefore you end up villagizing. In fact, it was really interesting on the Today Show. Yesterday morning or the day before, they had a, they had a special segment on pain at the pump. On one suggestion, go to a four-day work week mm -hmm. and then work at home. Mm -hmm. But they gave a tip. They said, to make this happen, quietly go see your HR person and say, if I don't get this, I'm going to quit. And I thought to myself, how stupid. Why doesn't the, why, why don't the heads of these industries say, we want our employees to realize that if they can figure out how to maintain productivity, uh, they can work wherever they want. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start a new pay skill. The more productive you are, the more you're going to get paid. But if you do stay home, you still need the power. Oh, yeah. So we are going yeah. to have to find a path forward to yeah. generate power. Yeah, but you know, you can put on your home a solar panel. And there are, there are I mean, uh, there are now batteries that basically, you, you can't have a big home with all the lights on and 17 refrigerators and well, four you know, audio systems going on so forth, but you can actually, we, I know this because we have a little cabin out on Otter Island in the Muscle Ridge in Maine, and, and, and our, our caretaker has built a barn, and our barn has a, has a solar panel on it, and, ba and basically his, he has his whole laptop set to him. You know, he's, we're actually doing live time filming at Osprey. <laughs> Interesting. A tiny little solar panel. Huh. Well, I did see some solar that was running at seven to eight dollars mm -hmm. uh, per watt yeah. uh, for generation. Yeah, you just have to generate small areas, so it gets back to your distributed energy again. Mm -hmm. So, if we were going to pick a bright spot on the energy horizon, yeah. could we say that distributed generation probably has come of for, age? For, yeah, four four villages. It's not come of age from Manhattan. Manhattan is not a village. <laughs> I've got to agree there. Matt, we've been going across the board. Any final comments for our audience? Yeah, I think it's tragic that, you know, I was born in 1943, um, so uh, I just turned 65. And it's been an unbelievable run when you think of all the things that we've, have happened over the course of time. But throughout that entire era, we had an energy model that was deeply embedded on a concept that that our core energy support was the fact that the entire Middle East was a desert floating on a pool of free oil. And I find it incredibly ironic, and I was thinking about this last week when the third anniversary of Twilight of the Desert came in on, that the number of people that have said, what if you hadn't read the, written that book? How long would we have gone? Just assuming that the Middle East had unlimited amounts of oil. That was a myth. The idea that you could that you could basically tolerate twenty dollar oil forever was a myth. The idea that two dollar gasoline was expensive was a myth. The idea that four dollar gasoline is expensive was a myth. The idea that two hundred dollar barrel won't happen was a myth. We need to realize that we have been badly hoaxing ourselves uh, in a collective hoax that was all a myth. And it's time to have wake up and say, that was really a bad dream. Thank you. So as a population, we need to change the way we think yeah. about energy. Yeah, we were living in a hoax. And we need to force our government to realize that they need to strat put strategies together that will keep us going as an economy yeah. with high well, price energy. We can't energy. rely on our government. I mean, th that's a myth, too. You know, we have to, we have to, you can basically tell our government, we're sick and tired of this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do something on our own. We'll have a big town meeting without you. I think you're right. I'm Richard Loomis for World Energy Television, and we've been having a discussion with Matt Simmons. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.